All right. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. Another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies we under. In him lies the hope for. In him lies the only hope for salvation. There you go. Um, we understand that. Nah, they messed up. That's crazy. Is that what come after that? Y'all messing me up. What I say? In him lies the only hope for salvation. What up? What come next? All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We understand that if we do not obey him, <laughs> why I'm messing up? I right, go, T. Uh, Goodness, uh, where you at? In him lies the only hope for salvation, and it is made manifest or obvious. Oh, that you yeah. do not believe. If we do not obey it, it may manifest or obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the most high. I know I didn't mess something up, but we're going to keep rolling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongue, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. That said. You see the saints that are in the room, to the saints in the chat, to the saints watching in, to the saints that can't make it, to the saints out there that we don't even know about, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's look at... Uh, da, 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 da. Y'all so corny in the chat room. <laughs> Sabbath peace. A, y'all list out the whole chat. Y'all funny. Um, mm, what are we gonna do? Let's recap last week. So last week, um, remember we talked about Yahushua. Yahushua, he went down into um Jerusalem. So the week before last, he went to back it down into Jerusalem, and he came. Matter of fact, I put some maps together for y'all. Let's put let's look at some maps so we can kind of we can kind of track the path. So I want y'all to visualize some of this stuff. Because you know it's a lot of traveling going on. So we remember, I'm about to put it on the big screen for y'all. So we remember, we talked about, um, we talked about the two kind of areas, right? So you got Nazareth is where uh, Mary and Joseph is from. Mary being uh, Joseph's, uh, I mean, Mary being Yahushua's uh, uh, mom and Joseph being his supposed dad, right? So they from up north right here. Now down here is where Judah is, the capital of Judah, like, like as we would see it today, the capital of the most important city in Judah is Jerusalem. So Joseph and Mary are actually from Jerusalem, right? Joseph is actually from Jerusalem. So when it's time to pay taxes, he had to come down. Y'all remember he had to come down here. So, you know what I'm saying? They made they they made they, you know what I'm saying, they journey. It's that red arrow right here. So they made their journey from Nazareth to Jerusalem. Then after that, they had Yahushua in Bethlehem, right? So it's a little city near Jerusalem. They had him in Bethlehem. So Yahushua was born in Bethlehem. Remember, all the people came and you know what I'm saying, they kind of they uh they kind of saw this is Sharon crazy. <laughs> uh they kind of saw um you know what I'm saying? Like they got to see the Messiah being born. They saw the miracle. Get off your phone, boy. You know what I'm saying? They saw the miracle. They saw everything that was going on. Who do you think I'm talking to? That's my point. That's what I'm saying. Get off of it. So I was uh so we we was talking about it and we was looking at how, you know what I mean, he he was born, all the people came and saw him. Some people that was promised by the most high God that they would see the Messiah before they die, they got to see him. And they got to move on, right? Then after that, Herod, King Herod, said that he was trying to kill all the babies because he heard the Messiah was born. So he went to Bethlehem and started killing all the male babies. I think like from two years up and down or something like that. So then to escape that, Joseph went into Egypt, right? Went over here into Egypt with his family and then stayed there for a little while until Herod died. And then he left Egypt. And went back to his hometown, Nazareth. So that's why people wouldn't understand that Yahushua was born in Bethlehem. 
because the prophecy is very clear to the people that the Messiah is supposed to be born in Bethlehem. So people didn't really understand him automatically to be a Messiah. That left dot, doubt. If they don't know he was born in Bethlehem, guess what? Now it's like, man, I don't know. You, you're probably not the real Messiah because you're not really lining up with the scriptures. That's kind of the stuff that we've been dealing with. So then we talked a little bit about this area here. Galilee, Capernaum, Nazareth, Cana. Cana. This is, this is his stomping ground, right? This is where Yahushua from. This is where his family from. This is for all his people, all his friends, all the people who know him from here. He's special. They know he's special up here, right? So up here, they know that like he's like, they know that he's not just some regular guy. They know he's a bright kid. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a bright young man. He understands the scripture, but they don't necessarily know he's the Messiah. They just know it's like, oh yeah, you know, that's little Yahushua. You know, no, that's a, that's a sharp boy. That boy, that boy sharp. He know a lot. You know what I'm saying? But they don't look at him like, oh, he's the savior. He's the king, right? They just look at him at, you know, that's, that's, that's y'all sure. Yeah, he's different. You know what I'm saying? That boy a little different. He's smart though, right? So that's his stomping ground right here. From there, there was uh, the Passover. So he went down to Jerusalem, y'all sure, for the Passover, right? Before he did that, he actually went to Cana. He did uh, a miracle there and turned water into wine. So that's all, you know, all like the little stuff that we see. That was kind of like the beginning of him doing miracles. So then he went to Jerusalem. He started knocking over tables, knocking over stuff at the temple. And he did some miracles there. So now all the people getting hype. You know what I'm saying? All the people getting hype at this point. Like, oh, man, he's the guy. So he went over here in the Jordan. He got baptized by John the Baptist. Right. He went out here in the wilderness, like down here in this area. And he started to uh, kind of attract a lot of people to him. So it's people from here that started to follow him. Remember, three times a year, everybody got to come down, right? So people from here started to follow him. Everybody is in Jerusalem at this point. So the people from here is like, he's the Messiah. You know what I'm saying? After John baptized him, the people from here is like, he's the Messiah. So he goes back up here. And now he starts doing more miracles. He starts preaching at this point, right? He starts preaching and teaching people, right? So that's what, um, that's kind of where we about to start off or where, where we about to continue on to now. It's just kind of looking at Yahushua being in Galilee and Capernaum after he's kind of gone through, he went through Samaria. Remember, he, he talked to the lady at the well and then he kept going. So that's kind of like where we, where we left off, all right? Any questions before we get started? What? No, that's just one of Messiah. There's a lot of people that act like the Messiah, but he he the he the only real Messiah. So yeah, he got he got the abilities. He got the superpowers, as you know what I'm saying. Kids might look at it. Uh but we're gonna talk, we actually gonna talk a little bit more about, you know, that that idea and that concept. And why it's like that. So let's go to um, let's go to uh, John. We left off at John chapter four. Let's go to John chapter five real quick. This is John chapter five, verse one. This is John chapter five. Did I lose T again? T, can you hear me? Yeah. You can't buy good help. You can't hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you now. I was on I was on mute, so relax. Yeah, yeah, I figured. It's John chapter five, verse one. <laughs> After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Yahushua went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by So the look, so here it is again, right? So remember Yahushua last week when we went. Or not last week, but the week before last when he went to Jerusalem. Why did he go? Uh, it was uh, Passover. He went for Passover. Now, this time it's saying there was a feast of the Jews. What feast comes after Passover? Uh, feast of weeks. The feast of the weeks, right? And there's three. Grab uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16, real quick. All right? We're going to hold what we got. We're going to come right back to John chapter 5, verse 2, verse 1, wherever we at. But let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. Y'all sit up straight. Get off from under the cover. Y'all ain't cold. I am a little cold. Say it. Go ahead and say it. 
All right, just want to make sure you're going to say, you know he wanted to say it. What do, you, what, what do you want to say, ma'am? You know he wanted to say, I am a little cold. That's how you be talking. I am a little cold. Oh, they cold the room. Yes. You done? All right. This it's is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. Watch what the book say. Well, I got to keep on telling you, put that phone away. <clears throat> Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before Yahuwah thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before Yahuwah empty. Mm -hmm. Every man So, shall the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is Passover, right? And the Feast of Tabernacles, right? He said, they better not come here empty. That was the law for us, right? So, now... This is Yahushua. We can jump back over to uh, chapter five. So this is John chapter five, verse one. Right now, Yahushua again is coming down for the feast. Right. It's probably talking about the feast of weeks. Why would he have to do that? Because the law says every male has to show up these three times a year. So three times a year, don't matter where you are. Guess what you got to be on a good foot back to Jerusalem, going to the temple. Because that is what the law demands. And Yahushua, if he didn't do anything, he kept the law. Right? So Yahushua, he pop up because legally he was obligated to. Right? He going to serve the, the most high. He going to serve the father. And that's where he is. So this is John chapter 5, verse 1. Let's see what the book says. After, there, after this, there was a feast in the Jew, of the Jews. And Yahushua went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue, Beth Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of import important folk. Of right. So think. So, so think about. I want y'all to picture. I should have found like a little drawing of it. I want y'all to picture this though. Right. There's a pool. So picture a little pool. Don't picture like no pool like, like that being people backyard or be at the casinos and stuff. Male like to male like to go to the casinos and swim. She be like, look, she like to go to the to the good pool. You know what I'm saying? Male don't male don't listen. Let me tell y'all about male. Male don't do no regular pool. What? What is y'all talking about? She not going to go swim in nobody regular pool. Give me the casino pool, please. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, give me the casino pool. If it's time to swim, it's casino pool time. Male, we not talking about that type of pool. Okay, we talking about when we talk about pool, we think of it as like we would think of it as like. Like, you ever went to a park, you know what I'm saying, and they didn't fill up the pond, you know what I'm saying, and it's all dirty and slimy and all that? Like, it's just water just sitting there, you know what I mean? And then there's five porches. So, you know how when you go into the pool, it's like the little stairs that you can, you can walk down into? It's five of those around this pond, but this ain't no, like, there's no filter you know what I'm saying? Ain't no pool man that goes and gets all the leaves out of it. None of that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just water, right? That's sitting there, right? And you got a bunch of people that's getting into this water. Watch this. About darn time, boy. You know what I'm saying? What, you lose a couple pounds? You know what I'm saying? Or did you gain a couple pounds? I never know. Goodness gracious, boy. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, but blind. So impotent for folk. What does that mean? Impot. Does it mean that they? You know what I'm saying? People better recognize them. Impotent folk. They are not potent. They are lacking some. Yeah, impotent folk mean that you know what I'm saying they they deformed or they handicap or something like that. It's something. It's something that something that they you know what I'm saying either were born or something that happened to them where. They wouldn't fight, fight, you know, fit into the, the category of a general human being, right? They got one arm or they got one leg, you know what I'm saying? Physically or maybe mentally challenged, right? So these are people that are are surrounding this pool. But watch this. Talk, talk to us about the impotent for, folk. A blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For right? Angel, so for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole or whatsoever dis or whatsoever di of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there 
which had an infirmity 38 years. When Yahushua saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step is down before me. Yahushua said unto him, Rise and take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Right. So now y'all got to understand what these people are doing. Right. What these people are doing is they saying, let's stand by this pool. I got something in my arm with it. I'm blind. It's something wrong with me. Let me stand by this pool. There's five steps. Right. Five entryways into this pool. The reason why they stand by this pool and they so faithful were coming to this pool because they knew, right? They believed that an angel had come and moved in these waters and that the people who sit in this pool, if the waters move on them, they might get healed, right? So people sit and try to squeeze into this pool all the time. But then you got a man that say he couldn't walk, right? Yeah. Huh? It said he saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. Right? So yeah. He he was in this he was in this situation for a long time where he couldn't he couldn't walk. So Yahushua walked by him and Yahushua asked him, he said, Yahushua, listen, y'all gotta, y'all just gotta understand. This look, it's a man who can't move, can't walk. An impotent man, right? Yahushua walk up to him like. Why you ain't getting the pool? <laughs> he walk up to him. Like, what's wrong, man? Why you ain't getting the pool? Watch it. Read it again. You know what I'm saying? Because people don't be read. I don't like how people read the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Y'all be reading it like it's just like, like this, you know what I'm saying? Shakespeare poem. Like, oh, that's so beautiful. You know what I'm saying? No, you got to read. This is real stuff. Yahushua, a man who know it all, right? Blessed by the Most High God. Got power to do everything. Most High God has given him wisdom and understanding above all. He look at this man who can't move, can't even wipe his own butt. He laying by the pool and he look at the man like, what's wrong, man? Why you ain't getting the pool? You know how insulting that is? He looks at that, you know I'm darn crippled. Why would you ask me a question like that? Right? But well, watch this. Well, y'all, she was saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. Look, y'all, you a knew. Y'all, you saw him and knew his butt couldn't move. Why, what happened? Watch this. Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent mm -hmm. man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step is down before me. So now the boy, I got to correct myself. He didn't ask him why he didn't get in the pool. He said, Wilt thou be made whole? Because people go to this pool in order to, you know what I'm saying, be healed. And so, yeah, she was asking him, like, you know what I'm saying, don't you want to be made whole? Kind of, you know what I'm saying, making, making the man think like, yeah, I'm trying to get in the pool, but I ain't got nobody to put me in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't get myself in there because I don't, I don't move like that. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get, I love to get in the pool, but I ain't got nobody to put me in it. And it's a whole bunch of them boys in there. It ain't even no room for me. Watch this. Keep going. Yahushua said unto him, rise, take water. up thy bed and walk. And immediately right? He, he told him what him now? Alone. Rise, make up thy bed, take up thy bed and walk. And he said, him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Let me turn you up a little bit. Go ahead, keep going. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The right? Jews so so the man got up, right? Yahushua commanded him. He said, take up thy bed, because he was laying on the bed. This man couldn't move. Yahushua just said, get your butt up. Go ahead and walk. And the man just got up. And all of a sudden, what in the world? I can move. Picked up his darn bed and got on a good foot. You know what I'm saying? was like, I'm back, boy. You know what I'm saying? I like to imagine he was a good looking man too. You know what I'm saying? Just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? He got up. He like, oh, these jokers better watch out now. I'm back, baby. You know what I'm saying? Put up his bed and then he kept moving. Right? So Yahushua told him, go ahead, pick up your bed and walk. But the book told us it was what day? Sabbath. The Sabbath day. What is our commandment related to the Sabbath day? Rest. We got to rest. And what can't we do? Work. Can't work or do what? Carry burdens. We can't carry any burden. 
But Yahushua told this man, pick up thy bed and walk. So now let's see what the people of our city said to this man when they saw him carrying his bed. Keep going. And the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, is this, it is the Sabbath. It is the Sabbath day. Is it not lawful for thee to carry thy bed? It is not right. lawful for thee to carry thy they, bed. He telling me like, it's not lawful for you to be carrying your bed. You're not supposed to be carrying your bed. It's the Sabbath, boy. We consider that a burden. And our law says you can't, that's our law. You cannot carry a burden on the Sabbath. That's law. So they looked at him carrying the bed and they say, we consider that a burden. Therefore, it's not lawful for you to carry your bed. But watch what the man say. What you what y'all think he gonna say? He don't know he the Messiah yet, right? But he definitely gonna be like, nah, this dude, this dude, he know, this is what this man know. He know some stranger walked up to me and said, wilt thou be made whole? I told him I couldn't even get into the pool. This stranger then told me, pick up your bed and walk. I thought he was crazy when he said that to me until I moved my arm and it moved. Then I moved my little hip and I was like, boy, I ain't moved my hip in a little bit. Then I moved my leg, stood up in a little squat. I said, dog, nab it. Picked up the darn bed and got loose. That's all he know. A stranger came to me, told me to walk. I didn't think I could walk. All of a sudden, I'm walking again, right? He get loose. Then he carrying his bed. The people, the Israelites of the city look at him like, hey, bro, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't carry your bed around. We don't do that. It's a Sabbath. You're breaking the law. You know what I'm saying? It's not lawful. Man tell you, look, I don't care nothing about your law. Let me tell you something. Man told me to pick up my bed and walk. I'm going to pick up my bed and walk. Right? Watch what he tell him. And he answered them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was not who it was. For Yahshua had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Yahshua findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. Right? So now, they said, who told you that? They're like, man, Yahshua, you know what I'm saying? This man told me that. Then he said, what? Then the man ran into Yahshua again. And what Yahshua tell him? Behold, sin no hold. more unless something worse happens to you. You thought it was bad when you couldn't walk. If you keep sinning, something worse than that is going to happen to you. It's important that y'all understand that message because a lot of people would have you believe the Yahushua would have it. Like a lot of, a lot of these Christians that have you believe, they, they, they call him Jesus. They have you believe Jesus say, it doesn't matter what you do. He died for all of your sins. It doesn't matter what you do. There's nothing that you could do to make him love you any more or any less. It is not about what you do. It's all about the work of the cross. Right? That's how they try to, they try to, they try to take away your accountability and make it to where you don't have to be accountable for what you do. Just, just try your best, whatever that means. Right? That's not what Yahushua is saying, though. Out of his own words, he says, stop, like, try your best to stop sinning. Is that what he said? Let's read it again. Let me see. Let me see. Let's read the, the new Christian standardized, Christianized version. It say, and Yahushua came, it said, and Jesus came to him and said, just try your hardest not to sin anymore. But if you do, I still love you. Let's read that. Let me see. Afterward, Yahushua findeth him in the temple and said unto him, behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come up come unto thee. So now look, if somebody come up to you, let's just, let's just think real life, right? This is a stranger. Somebody come up to you. They bump into you. Like you saw them one time and let's say they did something for you. They're like, hey, hey, you know what I'm saying? Look, here, here you go. This, that, another. Now you good, right? They did something for you. They hooked you up, right? You was like, I appreciate that, right? Then they come to you and then they see you and they're like, oh, okay, good. Good seeing you more. Hey, hey, don't do that no more or else something worse going to happen to you. How you going to take that? Somebody, a stranger, you don't know this dude. He come up to you like, hey, hey, but look, but don't do that no more unless something worse going to happen to you. All right, then, bro, you be good then. How you going to take that? Hum, don't, don't say, I know y'all ain't from where I'm from. How y'all think I'm going to take that? A man come to, come to me, say that. How you think I'm going to take that? 
Kevin said, yeah, yeah. Who you talking? Yeah. Not today, though. Back in the day, though. Yeah, yeah. Who you talking to? Yeah, yeah. What? But I don't know that, y'all, sure. All I know is somebody just threatened me. That's my thing. You can't threaten me. That's that's how the man just told him, hey, look, send no more or else something worse going to happen to you. But you are right, right? If it's Yahushua, if it's a man that caused you to walk, you look at that differently. If I ain't been able to walk for a long time and now all of a sudden I can get up and move around in a way that I haven't been able to him before. When that person tells me to sin no more unless something worse going to happen to me, how do you think I'm going to take that? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I ain't going to sin no more. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm not going to sin no more. So this is why when the Bible is telling us sin no more, this is why people don't accept it that way. This is why they get to make up their own little story about what it means. The Bible whole book is telling us don't sin anymore. Not try your best to stop sinning. Try to stop some of the sin. No, no, no. It says don't sin anymore. Don't commit any more sins is what it's telling you, right? But we get to taking it and we miss we misrepresent it in our own head. But the reason why we don't believe it is because God haven't touched a lot of these people. Right? God touched this man. And guess what? When he got up, he was like, no, nah, I hear you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Sin no more. I, get, I believe you because I've been through that. And guess what? I'm not dealing with it no more. And that happened at your mouth. Right? These are the interactions that people got to have. Look, it's a blessing when the Most High God touch you or do a miracle for you or do something special and let you experience him and feel him. Right? But it's even more of a blessing when you believe him without that. What y'all got questions for? Huh? Gracious. And you take the longest. Yeah, it's a blessing if if that's right. That's a good connection. So he about I know where you're going, right? So my son asked, he said, You know how you say it's a blessing for God to touch you and experience you give you an experience and you believe. But at the beginning of Bible study, you say, even if you got the gift of prophecy or the gift of or a supernatural experience. What's next? It can and it will be used against you. If what? If what? If you sin, if you do not repent. Right? So what that means is a person who says, Sin no more. And I look at that and I be like, all right, I ain't going to sin no more. Whether I did that because of an experience with God or whether I did that because I believed his word without the experience, that is going to be a blessing for me. It's going to be a more of a blessing if I did it without the experience. Right. But if I get the experience, if the most high God tap dance for me, he said, look, I gave you this experience. And then even after all that, guess what? I still say, yeah, I still want to sin. Right. Now, when it comes to judgment day, how can I say, but God, I would have did it. God going to stop you. Shut your darn mouth. I tap dance for you. I gave you the experience. There's a lot of people in this world that didn't get that experience. And you still disrespected me. You still rebelled against me. You are going to hell. Right. That's how the, that's how it's going to be in the judgment day. Hold, hold, hold real quick. Grab uh, grab Amos. What is it? Amos chapter three. What I want. Is it Amos uh, 4? I don't remember, but I know what you're looking for. One second. Let me see if we can find Amos 4. Go ahead. I want to say maybe it's Amos. Amos. May, try Amos 3, maybe verse 9. I think it's 3. I think it is 3. Nah, you die first, then the judgment camp comes later. So you're going to be dead. Ain't going to be thinking. Ain't going to be doing nothing. It's going to be like you darn sleep. You know how you sleep and you just wake up and if you didn't have no dream, you don't remember nothing from your sleep gonna be like that your buddy's gonna be dead and you know what i'm saying you either gonna wake up to the resurrection i pray all of us wake up to the resurrection because 
we righteous and we believe in, in, in Yahushua and we turn from all sin. But if you don't wake up to the resurrection, that means you're going to wake up to the judgment. I mean, you're going to have your whole, this is how I imagine it, right? You're going to have your whole life played out in front of you. I like to imagine it on like one of them big, you ever go into a store and they got a wall of TVs, you know what I'm saying? They got like an advertising, you know what I'm saying? Like playing on the big old, like a big old wall of TVs, right? It's going to be a TV. You know how they put the TVs together to make one big picture? You know what I'm saying? It's just going to be one big TV, you know what I'm saying? Like 8K, you know what I'm saying? I think, like you could just see that thing, beautiful. But you're going to see your whole life in HD, 8K. You know what I'm saying? No, bigger. You know what I'm saying? Whole life. This whole thing is going to be right there. And then it's going to play back for you. It's how I imagine it, right? It's going to play back for you. And y'all just going to be pausing that thing for you. Like, uh-huh. What about that? You know what I'm saying? You did You did that. That's you. You did that. I told you not to do it, though. You did that. Mm -hmm. Play it again. Oop, there go another. I ain't even have to fast forward that far. Look at that. That's another one, huh? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's your answer for that? And he going to walk you through all them things. And then he going to, after you get done, be like, all right, go to hell. And then your butt going to burn forever, right? It's going to be fire. And you ever seen fire? You know what I'm saying? It's like fire. You put something in the fire. What happened to it? It burned. But what happened when it burned? It shrivels up, eventually becomes nothing, right? Like ashes, right? So imagine that. So it's like, let's say you get burnt up in a fire, God forbid, right? But let's say a person, it was a dude, right? A couple, couple months ago that was in... um. Where was it? it was in front of uh where was this? Maybe it was in Israel. I think it was it was in the, the US embassy in Israel, right? And he was protesting Palestine, apparently. I don't know what he was doing for real, but protesting Palestine, uh uh apparently. And so he was a soldier, a US soldier, apparently. He set himself on fire. So he drenched himself in this this flammable liquid. Something like that, right? Poured it over. He said, Palestine! And then whoosh, lit itself on fire, went all up, and then, Palestine, Palestine, Pal I ain't trying to make fun of them, that's not, it's not, it's not all that fun, it's kind of fun, not all that funny, though, you gotta, you, that's what you gotta, you gotta, <clears throat> and then stop yourself, because it's like, it is morbid, and it is sad, right, it is sad that somebody would be in the mindset to do their stuff, I don't know why a person would do their stuff, self like that over, but you know, ain't none of my business, people do stuff because they believe stuff, because they've been led to believe stuff, right, so, he lights himself on fire. He on fire. And it's roaring fire, right? Because he under some super flammable stuff. Palestine! Palestine! And his voice get higher and higher. And Palestine! Fall to the ground. Palestine! Palestine! And he's dying, right? Because his skin is being burnt up, right? But eventually, he dies. And his body is withering away as it's on fire, right? And then eventually, they put him up. He don't go... But if the fire keeps going, eventually he turns into ash and there's nothing there. So how long do you got to feel that? Right. If you alive and that happens, he died pretty quick. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he it, it killed him. You know what I'm saying? In shock, it just kills him. Right. Because you got all that fire on you. So it, it he probably died in about a minute, maybe two. You know what I'm saying? And he's gone. He does, He's not living anymore. He's still on fire, but he's not living. You don't feel it. The difference about the judgment is. You don't die, right? In the judgment, when you get put in this fire, you sit there, right? And it burns. And it never actually burns you away to ash. You just sit there and you feel it, right? And you feel it and you feel it for eternity. You ever like something real painful, but you start to get used to it? Like when you get your hair done, you know what I'm saying? It's like you start to get used to it. Like imagine having to get used to that, right? I used to have a little hair, though. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? It's like, imagine getting used to that. Why y'all got so many questions today? I'm trying to teach. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's similar to cremation. It's just that they already dead when they do that. So people don't do that when they already alive. So uh, where were we? You jumped over to Amos. You find it for me? What did I lose Brother T again? I don't understand what's happening, to Brother T. What is going on, bro? I'm right. So, uh, we at uh Amos chapter uh what is it? Four verse four. Can you hear me now? It's verse four. Yes. This is Amos chapter four, verse four. You the yes. one disconnected. I don't know how you keep doing it. 
I'm watching the. I heard every word you said. Like this whole time, you telling the kids about burning. Like we ain't hear nothing from time, man. I'm sitting here. We ain't hear nothing from you. That's all I'm saying. Maybe it's your, maybe it's your connection. All right, go ahead. This is Amos chapter four, <laughs> verse four. Watch the books at. Y'all slowing me down. We got a lot to go through. Come to Bethel and transgress at Gilgal. Multiply transgressions and bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years. And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven and proclaim and publish the free offerings for this like if you, O children of Israel, says Yahuwah God. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in your cities and one of bread in all your places. Look, yeah. so he, look he said, I gave you cleanness of teeth and all this. In other words, it, you didn't the food was so bad. The famine was so bad. You didn't even have you didn't have no food stuck in your teeth. Right. He's saying your teeth had no food on it. That's how hungry your butt was. There was nothing to eat. So your teeth had zero food. He said, I gave you cleanness of teeth. Where? In all of your cities. In want of bread in all your places. Yet have ye not returned unto me, says you. Keep going. And also I have withholding the rain from you. When there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered to one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, says Yahuwah. Right? So this is what Yah does. Yah does two things. He says, I'm going to make it bad for you to get your attention, or... I'll make it good for you to get your attention. Right? Either way, if it doesn't work and you don't sin, I mean, if you don't turn from sin, it's going to be used against you. Right? That's how it's set up. That's how it's made. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay? This is, uh, this is John chapter 5. What verse we leave off on? Like 20 what? Verse 19? 17? John 5, verse... 11. Mm, uh, hold on, let me say. We are on verse 14. 14. This is John chapter 5, verse 14. Watch the book say. John chapter 5, verse 14. I keep looking over here. Make sure you don't jump off the screen again. All right. Afterward, Yahshua findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon come unto thee. Okay. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Yahshua which had made him whole. told he. And therefore did the Jews persecute Yahshua and sought to slay him. Because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Right? So when they heard about him healing somebody and telling the man to pick up his, his mattress and walk, they was looking like, oh, he's a sinner. So they were trying to get him and convict him of sin. Right? They were kind of after him. They were persecuting him, as the book would say. So they was after him trying to say, like, hey, you a sinner. And they was after him. So remember, this ain't this ain't like today. It ain't Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Ain't, ain't nobody dropping their location. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like that. So, like, they don't know what this man looked like. They just know what his name is. And they looking like, who told you Who told you could do that? Okay. And then he came back and he ran into Yahushua. Like, oh, this the man. What's your name? Yahushua. Didn't know more. Let something worse happen to you. All right, I got you. He went back. He was like, there's a dude named Yahushua. So after that, they looking like, Yahushua. Ain't, ain't that the guy that everybody raving about, talking about he might be the Messiah? Man, where this dude at? He ain't nobody the Messiah. No, nah, don't nobody really. Some people believe he the Messiah, but a lot of people don't even know who he is, right? So he's he's kind of the building his name up in Jerusalem right now. So, uh, so you know what I'm saying? Like some people looking like, no, nah, this ain't gonna darn Messiah. How you gonna be the Messiah when you breaking the Sabbath? Because in their mind, he broke the Sabbath, right? Other people looking like, no, nah, it's definitely the Messiah. He just healed a man and told him to walk, and the man start walking. There's no way that's impossible, right? Got to be the Messiah. Right? Keep going. Yahshua answered them, My father worketh here there too, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because not only... But look, he said, My father worketh, 
they they looking at him. They looking like you broke the Sabbath. What, in other words, you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath and you're healing people. That's work. Right. He's saying my father works. So I work. And he's talking about Yah. Right. So what he's saying is, if my father can do it, I can do it. So what is he really doing then? He's putting himself equal with the father. He's making himself equal to God. If, if he's sitting here saying, listen, if my father can do it, I can do it. Well, you ain't your daddy then, right? But if you think you are, then they're going to look at you like, okay, you think you're your dad. You think you could do everything your dad do. You've made yourself equal to your dad. In this case, he's saying that his dad is God. Now, they don't necessarily believe that because they think he's just a regular guy, right? But he looking like, oh, so you trying to make it seem like your dad is God and you trying to make it look like that you could do whatever your dad do. That is wild, right? You can't say that to our people. Like you trying to make yourself equal to God. Well, I stone your butt right now. That's how we were looking at him because our law say we should stone somebody if they try to take you to a God that you ain't familiar with. That's our law. So they think they following the law. Watch this. Keep going. Therefore, the Jews sought to sought the more to kill him because they trying to kill him. They look like. What you're saying is a killable offense, right? So they sought to kill him. They were trying to kill him. Keep going. Watch this. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Right? So they, they, they was upset because he made himself equal with God. I want y'all to pay attention to this very closely. Because there's a lot of people that I try to tell you that, no, Yahushua actually never. These people weren't crazy with what they was. They weren't just making up stuff to try to kill him. Right. They didn't do that until the end. So they saw they couldn't get him. But at this point, they really thought this is what they were seeing. They really thought he was making himself equal with God. And the reason is because he was. Watch this. Keep going. Then answered Yahshua and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do. Right. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can't do nothing except what he see the father do. Watch this. For what things soever he does, these also doeth the son likewise. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. Right. So he's saying, look, as the father can bring back people back to life, take dead people and make them alive again. The son is going to do the same thing. So he's telling people. I'm going to make dead people live again, right? Y'all have to imagine this is a regular guy from way up yonder in the slums. He is from Nazareth. Like, don't nothing could good come from Nazareth. You are a bum out there. You from the ghetto. You from, you from the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing down here where all the rich folks is? You poor, like, you know what I'm saying? Get out of here, right? But he comes. And he's talking to him like he's the boss. Like, yo, 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 if my father work, I can work too. And let me tell you another thing. If that freaks you out, y'all going to see worse than that. Just like the father can raise people up from the dead and make them alive again, you're going to see the son do the same thing. He's telling you he's going to raise people from the dead and make them alive again. So these people listening to him like, this guy's a freaking kook, right? Keep going. Watch this. For the father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the son. That all right. Then he said, God doesn't judge anybody. Right. God don't judge anybody. Our people know God as the judge. Right. When we talk about let God judge. Right. That's one of our phrases in our in our people. Let God judge this situation. Right. We look at God as the top judge. Y'all sure come and say, oh, God ain't going to judge nobody. He commits all judgment to the son. So in other words, now you've made yourself the judge of all people. Right? For anybody who look at it and be like, no, Yahushua didn't make himself equal to God. That is a lie. It's exactly what he's doing. Right? Keep going. Watch this. For the father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the son. That all mm -hmm. men should honor the son, even as they That all men God. what? Should honor the son even as they all honor the men should honor the son even huh as they honor the father 
So the same way that you honor the father, honor me. If it was me out there, I'd have picked up a stone and slapped him in the head with it right there. I'd be like, who is this man talking to me crazy, telling me I should worship him like I worship the father? I should give honor to him like I honor the father. Like I should give glory to him like I give glory to the father. Our people, that would be against our law. Unless he was really the son. Well, that is the question of the day. The, 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 the young man asked, why didn't God just show them? Why didn't the Messiah just show them? Hey, I'm the Messiah. Why didn't I sit it down and just thoroughly explain all the details to them so that they'll understand? Because if, 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 if he did that, they would probably get it, huh? He could turn water into wine. He could have done anything. Be like, look, here's proof. I'm the Messiah, right? But he didn't. And you know why? Because this whole thing is a setup. God is not here to tap dance for you or you or you or you or you. What he's here to do is give you limited information and see if you're going to trust him or not. That is our job. That's our decision. Do we, based off of what is in front of us, whatever he decides to show to us, some people he's going to show this, some people he's going to show that. Whatever he decides to show you or expose you to, whether that expose that, that expose is just this Bible study or whether it's something much greater later on, right? Whatever he decides to expose you to, it is your job to use that to be obedient to him, right? That's the whole game plan. The whole thing is a setup. He did it purposely so that people would not understand. So when you have an opportunity to understand, you ought to thank God for it, right? So Messiah's in there telling them, listen, honor me the same way that you honor God, right? Grab Isaiah chapter 48 for me. This is Isaiah chapter 48. We can actually start at verse one. Is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 1. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of Yahuwah and make mention of God, of the God of Israel, but not in truth, nor in righteousness. Right? So all you, hey, look, here it is. All you Israelites that act like y'all love me, y'all don't. Right? The Israelites is our people. He talking about us. You know, he ain't talking about these, you know what I'm saying? He ain't talking about the white folks over there in Israel right now. He talking about our people, the black folks that came from the slaves. Right? He said, man, all y'all who pretend like y'all love me, y'all go to the church, Y'all sitting there jumping around when y'all sitting there and saying God in every other sentence. Y'all pretend like y'all love me, but y'all really don't. You don't do it in truth. Right. Keep going. Watch this. For they call themselves of the holy city and stay themselves upon the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Who of hosts is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning and they want and they went forth out of my mouth and I showed them. I did. Right. He said the stuff that happened. At the beginning, I told y'all, right? The stuff that's going to happen, I told y'all from the beginning. I told y'all before stuff happened. In other words, he predicted the future is what he's telling you, right? Keep going. Watch this. And they went forth out of my mouth and I showed them. I did them suddenly and they came to pass because I knew that you are obstinate and thy neck is as iron as an iron sinew and thy brow brass. I have even from the beginning declared it unto thee. Before it came to pass, I showed it to thee, lest thou should say, my idol, my idol has done them, and my graven image and my molten image has commanded them. Right? So he's telling it. you, he's saying, the reason why I'm predicting the future for you, because when some of this stuff that I'm predicting for you happens to you, if I don't predict it, you're going to mess around and say, my idol did this for me, or this other god did this for me. You idiot, I did it. So I have to tell you beforehand, otherwise you're going to forget 
that I even told you and go give somebody else credit. And guess what? He told us beforehand and we still do the same thing. We still be looking up. Oh, man, no, my sign is the Aquarius. And I'm telling you, my Aquarius is a that I'm peaceful this morning. Shut your darn mouth. You don't know what you darn talking about. Oh, huh? Yeah, real quick, real quick. That stuff can change. Right. Right. But that's that's what that's what we end up doing. Right. We get to hanging up dream chasers and stuff and enlightened sage and burdening in our house and going like this, thinking I'm clearing out all the evil spirits. Right. And then something good happened to it. We'd be looking like, oh, it was because I burned sage last week. It happened every time. Most like God looking like you. Eddie, I told you beforehand, this is how it worked. And you still do stupid stuff. Right. But that's because we unlearn. That's what that's what we try to learn for. We learn the scripture to get all that silly stuff up out of us. Right. This is why we hear. This is why we read. This is why we learn the scripture to get that silly stuff up out of us. Right. Keep going. Watch this. Thou hast heard. See all this. And will ye not declare it? Mm -hmm. I have showed thee new things from this from this time, even hidden things. And thou did not know them. They are created now and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, lest thou should say, Behold, I knew them. Yea, thou heardest not, yea, thou knowest not, yea, from that time that thine ear was not open, for I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously and was called a transgressor from the womb. For mm -hmm. my name's sake will I defer my anger and for he my He said, For my name's sake. Will I defer my anger? In other words, because of me and because of my reputation, I am going to hold off on punishing the world. Right? He's saying because of my reputation, I am going to hold off on judging and punishing the world. But watch what he says next. I will refrain for thee that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I uh -huh. have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I he will said, how should my, my name be polluted? And what else? And I will not give my glory unto another. So if Yahushua is saying, honor me like you honor the father. Isn't that Yahushua saying, give me the glory that Yahushua, I mean, that Yah deserves? But Yah is saying, I won't give my honor to another. So that's why you can see our people struggle with what Yahushua is saying. Because we read this prophecy and we can clearly see Yah is not giving his glory to another person. So how is this other person standing up saying, hey, I work just like the father works. A matter of fact, when you give honor to the Father, you should get the same honor to me. That's giving glory to another person. So when we look at him, it feels like he's telling us about a different God. It feels like you are a blasphemer. It feels like you're exalting yourself to the level of God improperly, right? It feels like you're making yourself equal with God. And that's why they were attacking him. But what we have to understand and what Yahushua is going to continue to try to teach us is that he is equal to God because he is God. He and God are one. Right. And he's going to say that to us later. But let's keep going. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called. I bro, am Mike, you still there? I got to make sure bro, Mike, I don't know. I don't know exactly who bro, Mike is. If bro, bro Mike might be, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's if that's bro, bro Mike that we be talking about. I mean talking to. Um, or if that's a, a different bro Mike, but bro Mike, I gotta see what type of Israelite you is, you know what I'm saying? Bro Mike might be it might be offended about this. You know what I'm saying? Yahushua is is Yah though, you know what I'm saying? He the only image of Yahushua. He the only image of Yah. Right? The only image that we got of Yahuwah is Yahushua, period. Right? Keep going. I'm here. All right, bro, Mike. All right, just checking on you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's a phone number on there you want to talk. I don't know if we talked before. You know what I'm saying? It's a phone number on there you want to talk. You got some problem with any of that. I want to talk to you, bro, Mike. Keep going. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel my call. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. My hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has 
span the heavens when I call unto them, they stand up together. All ye assemble yourselves and hear, which among them has declared these things. Yahuwah has loved him. He will do his pleasure on Babylon and his arm shall be on. Oh, the my fault. Food. Jump on back to uh, John 5. I got to apologize to bro Mike. Bro Mike said, man, I've been around. Wow. I know how crazy y'all is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to apologize to bro Mike. Sometimes I don't know, bro Mike. You know what I'm saying? They jump in here sometimes and them boys be thinking they hearing something they like. At the beginning, I get to talking about white folks or something. They like to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he talking about the Edomite. Then I get to tell them like, oh, the Edomite ain't the white man. And they be like, oh, now this brother don't know what he talking about. You know what I'm saying? So I got to check. That all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. That's right. This is John chapter five. What is that? Verse what? 23. This is John chapter five, verse 22. Watch the book say. 23. 23. This is John chapter five, verse 30, uh, 23. Watch the book say. <laughs> he that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father, which has sent him. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not mm -hmm. come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. For as the father has life in himself, so has he given the son to have life in himself and mm -hmm. has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. That's right. He said, look, forth. the hour coming that everybody who dead in the grave, they're going to hear his voice. And they're going to what? And shall come forth. They that boy's going to lift right on up. Y'all sure one day y'all sure going to be like, get y'all butts up. Just like he told the man, pick up your bed and walk. Y'all sure going to say that to dead people. These people going to be dead, burnt up. You talking about cremation? They going to be burnt up. The whole bunch of ashes just spread over. You know, some people... They cremate it the, and they go in a plane or a helicopter and they spread the ashes all over the water. Now, you got to imagine these people going to be sipped up out of the water, put back together. They hold all their body parts is going to come back from ash, going to come back and their bone is going to form. And then the meat around their bone is going to form the muscle and the sinews as the book call it, the joints. Everything going to reform. Then all of a sudden they're going to be back and reform and he they're going to stand up and come right to Yahushua. Dead, evil, good, everybody come right to Yahushua. Guess what? The good gonna be resurrected, right? The evil gonna be judged. He'll tell you, buddy, watch this. And shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have they done that evil. have done good to the resurrection of life. But what else? And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. It's a resurrection now, but it's the resurrection of damnation. He literally is gonna put everybody's body back together. Just so that he can burn them forever. He's a sick guy, if you think about it. Like, it's just a sick guy, if you think about it. But that's the cost. That's the cost. Right? He's looking like, if I got to die on the cross for some sin that y'all committed, then y'all got to burn, for uh, burn forever in hell if you don't want to obey what I'm telling you. That's the cost. That's the trade-off. Right? Keep going. I can of my own self do nothing as I hear I judge and my judgment is just because I speak not my own will, but the will of the father, which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bears witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. Ye sent unto John and have bear witness unto the truth. But I received not testimony from man. But these right. So I now listen to what he's saying. Go back just a little bit. Listen to what he said. He says, I bear he said if i bear witness of read that part again what verse is that if i bear witness of myself my witness is not true why would he say that because two to three witnesses let it be established we just read this right in deuteronomy it told us those of us who read the bible in a year right so it's a group of us reading bible in a year for those of us reading the bible in a year it tells us very clearly it says it a matter has to be established by two or three witnesses it says very clear, real quick, grab Deuteronomy chapter uh, 19. Deuteronomy chapter 19, give me verse, uh, I think it's verse 17. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 17. Let's see how that go. Let's see how that go. 
Deuteronomy chapter uh, 19, verse 17. They sitting here listening to this man. Listen to this man talking about, yeah, I'm going to make people alive. I'm going to kill them. You know, I mean, I'll make people alive after they already dead. I'm going to resurrect them. Right? And you got to give honor to me like the father. You know how much that doesn't compute for us? I, don't, I just want y'all to understand how serious, the, like, listen to somebody saying that for us. I know right now listening to it, it's just like, oh, okay, he thinks he's God. It's like normal practice. But for our ancestors, that is like, what did you just say? Well, I will come across this table and beat your butt talking like that, right? Because it's like nobody talks like that about God. You making yourself equal to God? You trying to say that you and God don't like the same? Okay, I'll give you an example. Sister Sharon, right? Sister Sharon, let me give you it. Sister Sharon going to help us out. Sister Sharon, when Moses, when Moses, <laughs> when Moses, when y'all told Moses, get the water out of the rock. You go to the rock and make the water. Take your staff and make the water come out of the rock. Moses came back and Moses said, must we get the water out of the rock for you? When the people were complaining. The most I got, Sister Sharon, charged Moses with what? Right, what did he chose? Cho Let me see. Who was the second or third witness outside of John? We're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. Don't <laughs> Look, Sister, Sharon, Sister Sharon said, Don't bring this up, right? But Moses, just for saying we, talking about Aaron, Moses, and God, right? Just because he used the word we, right? The most high God told him. You will not go into the promised land. That's Moses. The water came out of the rock. The people drank. He did everything the most high God asked for. The only problem that the most high God had is he said, you didn't sanctify me. In other words, you didn't set me apart. You didn't make me different. You grouped me in with you and Aaron, baby girl. You look good. What you do? What you do? You do, do your eyebrows today? Oh, I mean the eyelash, the other eyebrows. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what was I saying? You look pretty. What you got? What you got on? You do something in your face? You got makeup on? A little bit? Yeah, a little bit of makeup. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, put them away. What was I saying? <laughs> I don't remember what I was saying either. Oh, no, we were talking about Moses, right? So Moses got in trouble for saying we. He didn't set y'all apart. So now how much, don't you think, if Yahushua wasn't God, if Moses, the man, right? Moses, the man, all he did is said, must we bring this water out the rock, right? And as soon as he did it, y'all said, you didn't believe me. You didn't sanctify me. You not going to see the promised land. Then Yahushua pop up, right? And those who believe that, those that, that don't believe that he's God, Yahushua will pop up and he's just great prophet. He's the Messiah, right? Yahushua will pop up and said, honor me just like the father. And y'all ain't got nothing to say to him about that. He ain't get punished for saying that. Right? That tells you that y'all don't understand the law. The law say you can't even say we. If God tell you to do something and he say, hey, I'm doing it. You got to give God all the honor and all, all the glory for what you did. God brought this water out of the rock. Must God bring this water? Must y'all bring the water out the walk, uh, rock for y'all? Right? You never say, do we got to do this for you? Like, boy, you ain't got nothing to do with this. You just a vessel. Right? But with Yahushua, it's different. With Yahushua, he can tell you flat-footed, look you right in the darn eye and say, oh, give me the honor, the same honor that you get a father. And just like the father do, that's what I'm going to do. That's him saying we. That's stronger than a we. He said, the same man he is, give it to me. He either a sinner or he's the most high God. Ain't no other way to look at it. Right? Let's go back. This is John. So uh, no, Yahushua no, said. No, 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 no. We didn't read Deuteronomy. This is Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15. 
It's Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse what? 15. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15. Watch this. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sinneth at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Right? So, Yahushua is saying he's quoting the law essentially, right? Go back to John chapter 5. What verse? Uh, 20. We'll do John chapter 5 verse 20. Uh, what was I? 23, 22. We was at. We was at 22, so it we got to be like 23. Really. We was at 34, but you wanted to go back. It was 34? So we'll do 30. John chapter 5, verse 30. Okay. I can of my own self do nothing as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But right? So now, Sister Tia me. asked the question. Sister Tia asked the question. She said, what other witnesses he got? He about to walk through it. He about to use these witnesses and then dismiss them and say, but I got better witnesses, right? So he said, I can bear witness of myself. But according to the law, if I do that, I'm a liar. If I'm the only witness of myself, that don't a witness can't one witness can't establish nothing. That's what he's saying. So he's saying if I, I can bear witness of myself, right? I can tell y'all who I am. But if I did that, that don't mean nothing. Because our law say you can't establish nothing on one witness, right? Then he come back and he say, but y'all got John. Read that part again for me. I just want y'all to see. I want y'all to sink in how, how this man talk to y'all. Y'all sure just talk to y'all. However, however he want to talk to y'all, he talk to y'all. Look, I'm, look, I want the same honor that y'all give God, right? He come back and I'm going to resurrect some people. And when I resurrect them, some of them I'm sending to damnation and some of them I'm sending to the resurrection of life, right? Then he go on and he say, it's a whole lot more than that. But let me just tell you this. I can bear witness of myself, but it wouldn't even mean nothing if I bear witness. Of myself. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got John, right? Read this. Watch this. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. Right? Y'all went to John, didn't y'all? Everybody, and remember, everybody messed with John. All of Jerusalem, all of Judah came out to see John, right? So everybody messed with John. He looking like, y'all like John, right? Y'all, he bear witness of the truth, didn't he? Right? Keep going, watch this. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. Right? So he's telling you, I look, John testified to me. John, remember, John popped up. He was like, yo, yo, that's the one. That's the Lamb of God. So he's looking like, oh, I'm the guy that John was talking about. He's telling them, I'm the guy that John was talking about. And don't y'all trust John? Why don't y'all back up? Go sit down. Right? He's looking like, hey, John is the one. Right? Y'all thought John was the Messiah. John told y'all very clearly. You remember last week, he told them, I'm not the Messiah. Right? I'm not the Messiah. The one that comes after me is the Messiah. And he's saying, I'm the one that came after. He's talking about me when he say that. But then after he do, he do that, he say, but I don't even accept no witness from a man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So after he get to all that, he put, look, he put John all the way up here and then say, but I don't even need that. Right? Watch what he say next. So far, he got two witnesses. Right? But he's discounted both of those witnesses. He said, I don't need John. And I don't, I mean, I don't need myself and I don't need John. Watch this. He was a burning and shining light and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witnesses than that of John for the work. Right. He said, but John, that's light work. I don't even accept with, I don't even, I don't accept witness of man. You know what I'm saying? I got greater witnesses than that of John. Watch this. But I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the father has given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the father has sent me and the father himself, which has sent me has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. You have right. Not, not so what he's telling you is all these miracles I do is not John witnessing of me and it's not me witness of myself. 
This is the most high God telling you. who. Right. He's saying the most high God is giving this to you. Me doing these miracles. He's giving this to you to stamp me as I'm approved. I am who I say I am. Right. But then he doesn't stop there. Keep going. Y'all sure. Watch this. And the father Sister Tia, himself, Sister Tia asked for his two witnesses, right? First, he had himself, but he said, nah, he don't count if he testifies himself. Then he had John, but he said, you know what? I don't even accept witnesses of men. So he said, my witness, I got greater witness than John. Yah testifies of me through these miracles. So that's one witness. And keep going. And the father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. You have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has sent him, ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So, to answer your question. Nah, keep going. Mm -mm, keep going. And you will not come to me that ye may have life. I receive mm -hmm. not honor from men, but I know you that you not you have not the love of God in you. Watch I am coming in my father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Mm -hmm. How can you believe which receive honor one from another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the father. There is one that accuses you. Even there Moses. is one that accuses you. Watch this. Even Moses. Even in Moses. Trust, in whom you trust. Uh-huh. For had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? His two witnesses. Yah himself in the scripture, right? He says, Moses wrote of me, right? He said, Yah testified of me in his word. He said, search the scripture, right? Those are the two witnesses that Yah has put forth for Yahushua, right? Those are the ones that he chose. That is what he says is a greater witness than um than uh, John the Baptist, right? The signs that the Most High God gave him and the word. It is important that we understand that. Those are the two things that Yah set up for us to believe that Yahushua is who he is, so, right? Signs and wonders and the word, Moses. So, right? Psalms 40, verse 7, or 7, verse 40, but I'm leaning 40, verse 7. And he says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Right? That's the same thing as saying, search the scriptures for in them you think they have you have life, but these are they that testify of me. So he has those two great witnesses. But if you really break it down, he has like just so many, right? Every prophet, Joel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Moses, um, Joshua, uh, uh, David, Samuel. The whole, the whole scriptures, everything, right? He has like plenty of witnesses. He can go down a list and it'll take him forever. But the two main ones was the ones that the brother just spoke of. Right. So the, the scriptures, what the brother is saying is the scriptures are all talking about Yahushua, but there are specifics, right? There's Moses who says in Deuteronomy 18, that one day there's going to be a prophet that comes from amongst the people like Moses. And his words will be required of, of everyone. That's what right? Tia was asking this morning on band. That's exactly what her question was. What is the require it of you? Right? That's what Moses was talking about, right? And the same thing. And the it is the it. words, right? Yas, mm -hmm. uh, Moses told us that the words will be put into his mouth. Yahuwah's words will be put into this prophet's mouth. Those words are the it, right? So those words would be required. So in other words, what Yahushua says is required is required of us, right? What well, Yahushua commands is required of us. And he's telling us, Moses said that. Moses was talking about me when he said that. When, when Daniel was prophesying mm -hmm. of the Messiah, Daniel was talking about me when he said that. When all these different prophecies, when Jeremiah was talking about the Messiah, Dan Jeremiah, when he's talking about the branch that comes from Jesse, when Isaiah is talking about, you know what I'm saying, the branch that comes from Jesse, when Ezekiel is talking about the, 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 the root of David, right? All the different prophecies, they're all talking about Yahushua. So those, that is tested. That's why he's saying search the scripture. Because, yeah, what y'all looking for is this. 
the man y'all been waiting for is me. So he's telling them without using the actual words, he's telling them I'm the Messiah. Right. Without actually using the words, he's just telling them I'm the Messiah. Right. So those are his two his uh his two witnesses that um that, you know, what I'm saying that the people had to had to had to kind of deal with in that moment. Right. Any question? It looks like there's a lot of activity in this chat. I don't see. I don't know, was it questions? Since Yahushua is the word, isn't he still his witness? That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. He still ended up being his witness. Yeah, but he didn't. He, he couldn't he tell that to the brothers because uh, we wouldn't even understand it on that level that deep. That's why he was like, I don't even use myself because, you know, one witness ain't enough to like make a matter established. So, you know, we would have been able to be like, you know, you can't do that because you're the only witness. So that's why y'all, she was like, I don't even need to use myself. Yeah, since his word got put into other prophets' mouths, they became a witness of his word. But the spirit of his word come from him. So you are right. It all it all comes. Well, he's God, so it all gonna come from him anyway. Mm -hmm. But now, when people when 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 another person is able to stamp it, then they become a witness at that point. He can't he can't personally be counted as a he witness definitely for himself, can. or can he? Yeah, he can. But our law says a a one witness doesn't establish it so what y'all sure is right now he's being cocky he basically saying like imagine y'all ever play spades you know what i'm saying so you play like you playing spades and you know you got the hand right and somebody and somebody play something and they think they did something you know what i'm saying so you put a card out there it's like you put a king out there you know what i'm saying you put a let's say you put a jack out there right and then they they play like a, a king or a queen and they take your jack, right? And you're looking like, oh, I don't even need that. You know what I'm saying? Like that, listen, if you knew what I had in my hand, you would know, oh, I, I'm about to be cutting on the, I'm about to be cutting on them clubs right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I gave you that jack, you thought you were doing something taking my jack. The next time you play a club, I'm cutting your butt, right? Because I didn't need that. That jack is something to you because your hand is whack, right? You think that Jack is something. So what he's saying is, like, I give testimony in myself to y'all. That means something to y'all. That means something when somebody walk up to y'all and be like, yo, I'm the man. That's why he said later, he said, if somebody come in their own name, y'all would accept them. So he's telling them, I don't even have to come in my own name. I don't have to talk about myself. I don't have to tell you that I'm the man. I know that already. I don't even need it. If I say it for myself, our law, so that ain't even acceptable. So count me out. I'm not even going to speak for myself. John, speak for me. But you know what? Count him out too, because I don't even accept nothing from men. Let me tell you who really speak for me. These miracles, that's the most high God telling y'all who I am. Oh, and also search the scripture. That's the whole scripture talking about who I am. Right? Because now it makes you, it forces you to say, what do you value more? Do you value people telling you something? Or do you value the most high God telling you something? Because who can do miracle? Who can duplicate that? It's not a whole lot of people can't duplicate that. Right? Who can duplicate the scriptures? Nobody can duplicate the scriptures, not even the demons. Right? They tried and can't get it right. They tried to do the Quran, made a mess. They tried to do the Mormon book, made a mess. Right? Not even the demons can do that. Right. So that's what he's saying. He's saying he's saying, let me take it to a place that can't nobody mess with. Right. It's another person like somebody else can pop up and be like, I'm the Messiah. Please believe me. Well, he testifying of himself. So y'all, she would say we're not even going to we I'm not even entertaining that conversation. I'm not even going to entertain that that argument. Anybody can walk up and tell you they the Messiah. Take me out of it. Right. John the Baptist said y'all mess with John the Baptist. Y'all thought, you know, what I'm saying he said, I'm sorry. Now, very few people can beat John the Baptist, but hey, maybe somebody tricks everybody and lies about who the Messiah is. Take him out of it too. I ain't even gonna accept nothing from men because men be lying. Let me tell you who who let me tell you something that y'all can't y'all can't disprove. I'm doing these miracles, and I'm telling y'all these this is coming from the most high God. Oh, and if you don't believe that, search the scriptures. Whole book talking about me. Right? So he's saying those are the heavier witnesses, those are the greater witnesses. He just he just basically being cocky like I got four witnesses and I'm I'm giving you two of them. 
You know what I'm saying? And I'm still going to kill you with the last two. I know Mary was listening, y'all. She was like, you better say <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Her brother, he says exactly what I was thinking. Our law wouldn't allow him to witness for himself. Yeah, not it would, but not by himself. So like him and John together, that, that would be a fair witness because it's two of them. But if he's if he's the only one witnessing of himself, then yeah, our law wouldn't allow it. Um, it don't make sense, but it makes sense. What don't don't make sense, but it makes sense. He can't personally be counted as a witness, uh, since y'all sure is the word isn't he on all right? He is technically acting alone, and he's with of the Father. Is y'all sure the only person who can act as a witness onto itself? No, anybody can act as a witness on it uh, to themselves. It's just that you have to have a second witness to establish the matter. So, for example, if I say, "Hey, I'm innocent," right? I didn't do it. That don't mean nothing. Of course, you're saying you're innocent. Of course, you're saying that. But if I say that and Tasha is right next to me, it's like, no, nah, he was with me. He didn't kill that person because he was with me. Now I have an alibi. That's two witnesses at that point. Now, okay, now you got a case. All right, now you got a case. Before that, I can't take nothing Philip saying. Of course you're going to say that about yourself, right? Or if it's vice versa, if I say, hey, DJ did something to me. He, he, tried, to, he tried to punch me, right? If I just say that about DJ, our law would say, all right, whatever. Do you have anybody else that'll say it? Okay, well, then go on about your business. Like, I don't even want to hear about it if it ain't two people at least saying it. But if I came and I say, hey, Tasha, you know what I'm saying? Did you see DJ hit? Okay, let's go tell him. Now, we say that. Now we got a case. Now there's a trial, right? Now the judges can hear it out. Be like, okay, Tasha, what is, uh, what'd you say happened? Okay, Phil, what'd you say happened? Okay, DJ, what did you say happened? Now, DJ got to have a witness to say, I didn't do it. Because if we got two witnesses and he, and he only, uh, only himself is saying, no, I didn't do it. Well, guess what? His matter can't be established. Ours can because we have two. So DJ got to go find Mel and Mel be like, nope, I watched the whole thing. Tasha and Phil lying. He didn't do it. So now that makes one group a false witness. So now the judges got to collect all the evidence, right? When they got that type of situation, they got to collect all the evidence. Then they got to figure out who's the false witness. So then let's say, let's say I'm accusing DJ, right? This is all in our law. Let's say I'm accusing DJ of trying to punch me or punching me, right? Tasha says, yep, I saw it with my own eyes. Mel say, no, I watched the whole thing. DJ didn't punch him at all, right? Now, if I'm lying and Tasha is lying, both of us get punched, right? Because the law would say whatever would happen to the person who's the perpetrator, right, is supposed to happen to the false, uh, false witness. So our law would designate eye for an eye, right? So whatever whatever happened to me, if I got punched, then I'm supposed to be able to punch DJ back. That would have been the law. The, the judges would set it up. They'd say, okay, yep, he punched you. Therefore, go ahead and get your lick back. Bow, I'll punch him in the mouth, and then the, the thing would be over. But if I lied about him punching, that means that I wanted him to get punched, right? I was trying to punch him. So guess what? Now your butt really going to get punched, and then DJ get to punch me. The way, the way I accuse him of doing it in the first place. And then he'll get to punch Tasha also because she came in on the lie. Right? No, it's all hypothetical. None of this. Is, let me tell you something. None of this is going down. You know what I'm saying? DJ, you better watch your mouth. Watch your imaginary mouth. You know what I'm talking about? None of this is going down in real life. But I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, how, our law, uh, that's how our legal system worked. You know what I'm saying? It, the judges would have to figure it out. But you couldn't even bring the case. You can't, couldn't even take it to trial if you the only person saying it. So that's the point that Yahushua was saying is that he was the only, if he was the only person saying it, he would be a liar. It wouldn't even, it would, people would look at him like we don't believe you, right? But he said, I got another, John the Baptist. But you know what? Forget me and him. I got um, the miracles and I got the scripture, right? And all that is a greater witness than John the Baptist. Let me see. What else we got? Um, y'all should have said I'm David. <laughs> y'all <are> crazy. <laughs> Even Aaron lost his face and made the calf. Uh, saying the same mountain. Okay. Do I got any new questions? Let me see. Um, 
this is the most irony ever, like an oxymoron. He is the one, but he won't appear to be the one, but he is the one, the word. This is very hard to grasp and believe now. So what? And believe now so I can imagine those people. Yeah. 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 She's saying she's saying right now, even reading it now, it's hard to grasp and believe. So imagine not even having all the context and the information we got. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Right. The prophecy called Yahushua a stumbling block. Right. That means it's something right there. And then you trip over like Ugh. that's what he called. It. He didn't call. They didn't call him a stepping stone to lift you higher. They called him a stumbling block to make people trip, right? So that is what, that's how it's set up. I want y'all to, what, what Sister Pam is saying the rock of is, offense. huh? The Rock of Offense. The Rock who, of Offense, Yeah, who's, right? that, who's that, that again? That was the song? The Rock of Offense? No, I think that I want to, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, I, I want to say Isaiah. Your boy, but I might not be, I might not be right. I'm rusty out here these streets. Yeah, I might not be right about that. <laughs> a stumbling uh -huh. block, the rock of offense. I don't know. I forgot who said that. Let me see. This does, uh, uh. Any other questions before we wrap it up? For bro Micah. Bro Mike, you ain't got no questions? You ain't got no commentary? I got to check on bro Mike. I don't know. You know what I mean? No, I'm just, I'm just playing, bro Mike. I'm going to stop playing with you. Bro, Mike said he been here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro, Mike said he been here around. Don't, don't play me. You know what I'm saying? Bro, Mike said I ain't finna to nothing. I've been here around. You know what I'm saying? I just don't be saying nothing. So, yeah, like, it's good. Like rap song. But, uh, you know, y'all got the context of the law, though, when y'all reading this, though. So, that's that's helping y'all a lot. I'm seeing certain questions y'all asking and, like, y'all y'all familiar with all the stuff y'all was saying and, like, how he's referring back to Moses and back to the story. So y'all already know like the significance of Moses. And when y'all, she would say, if you to believe Moses, you to believe me. So that's good that y'all reading the New Testament with this context. It makes it, it makes the world a difference. Yeah. So tomorrow we're gonna get on the Sabbath call. If y'all have any um in the, on the fellowship call, if y'all have any other questions and y'all want to join the call, I'm on by. We'll talk through uh, whatever we need to talk through. Get your question together. We'll go through it. Y'all willing? See y'all tomorrow, 4 o'clock Pacific time sharp. I've been late the last couple calls, though, so I don't know about the sharp, but I'm going to be on time for it. Y'all willing? All right. Y'all bless. Y'all be well. Let's pray out. All right, y'all.